So, you see, Granny Jahiet was a mercenary when she was younger. She just talks like that out of habit. She's not trying to scare the children on purpose. <laughs> oh, there I go again. Always talking about my own things. Do you, maybe, have anything you want to share? Um, it's okay if you don't. You... you could also just... talk about what you think of me? Oh, I... Uh, I, I think you're an incredibly strong and thoughtful young woman. You'll meet many amazing people and live a very happy life. You won't miss someone like me. Huh? Are those your friends over there? All oh, right. This version of Atosa hasn't met us yet. Friends? I guess you could say that. It must have taken them a lot of effort to find me. So... I should see what they need. I'm sorry, Atosa. We'll have to continue this conversation another time. Another time, huh? Um... Yeah, okay. I'll head back to the village then. Talk to you... some other time. It's nice to see you, Traveler. I believe this is the first time we've met. Born into abject sorrow, he shall now become the Loom of Fate. Your... Kari Bear Alberic. Oh. You know me? That's quite the surprise. I don't believe I've met you before. Oh, I see. It was the memory, wasn't it? Your sibling's memory. You saw... the me from back then. This is Atosa's memory. I came here to say goodbye to her. But... I suppose I'll just leave her a message instead. Come, let's find somewhere else to talk. I suppose you could call it the realm of my consciousness. I'm someone who no longer exists in the real world after all, as you well know. Uh, it's nothing. I still have enough strength to play the part of a good host. I've always hoped that I'd get the chance to talk to you like this, and now, the time has finally arrived. Extreme sorrow and pain. Hope 
and regret coursing through your veins. And a degree of abyssal power that defies comprehension. Father told me that once I possessed all those elements, I would become the loom of fate. But despite his intentions for me, I never truly became the loom of fate. I was merely used as a means for its construction. In truth, I died the moment I set everything in motion. The person you see before you now is nothing but a remnant of consciousness left over within the loom of fate. As for your question, the loom of fate is a device capable of weaving ley lines. In its primitive form, it can only be used to create and implant memories. But, as more of it is completed, its power becomes stronger and stronger, until finally, it has the power to weave real ley lines of its own. Once fully completed, the moment it gains the power to weave ley lines, it loses the lower level ability to influence memories, but it also becomes a tool that can change the entire world. Yes, I have the ability to control the loom in its semi-completed form. I suppose you can think of it as a form of compensation. After all, its existence cost me my life. Ah, that. I was wrong to implant those memories. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Not only for everyone in the village, but for you as well. I just... wanted them to feel like I once existed in this world. As if... I had a chance at life. what you must be thinking. Why would I do something so meaningless? <sighs> but I just... I just couldn't accept it. I had to know what it would be like if I had my own life. What kind of person I would be. What other people would think of me. Chief Amadiya, Baram, Granny Jahiyat, Atosa. What would it be like if I could live alongside them? No cataclysm, no curse. Just a quiet life in a peaceful village. I was curious, so I selfishly tried to have my own life. Even if... Even if that meant piecing together the version of myself that could have been one memory at a time. I know it sounds stupid. <laughs> After all, my life ended a long time ago. Any chance at living was stripped away from me when I was eight years old. My consciousness left to mature in an illusory world of nothingness. Even the form you see before you was... Nothing but an invention based on my father's appearance. An imagined version of what I would look like if I had the chance to grow up. I know. But there's nothing I can do to make them find me. If I could exist in the real world, I would return without a second thought and surprise them with the suddenness of it all. But, well, that's not possible for me. Ugh. I know. 
now. Captain Dainsliff? Twilight Sword, you mean? Uh, no need to meet up with him. Things should already be settled on his end. Exactly. As someone who could only exist in people's memories, the fact that I'm able to talk to you in my consciousness like this can only mean one thing. The Loom of Fate has already been completed. No need to worry about Captain Dainsleff. He's absolutely fine. The only reason he lost the eye was because I happened to guess exactly what he was planning. Captain Dainsleff has had the eye inside his body this whole time, hasn't he? His plan was to lure the Abyss Order to a false location, capitalizing on their pursuit of the eye in order to have the chance to confront the Prince. He would then hand the eye to you and tell you to take it away from that location. That way, Captain Dainsleff could accomplish his own goal and ensure the safety of the Eye all at once. A very thorough plan. That's right, because in his mind, he had given it to you already. Before you two entered that false location. Traveler, wait. We've no time to lose. Let's head inside. That was when I implanted the memory of him handing you the eye. Given the tense situation at that time, Captain Dainsleff failed to notice anything out of the ordinary, and took that memory to be real. I'm sorry, Traveler. But I needed the Loom of Fate to be completed. And to do that, we had to retrieve the Eye. I promise I'm not trying to conceal anything from you. But I truly have no idea what the Prince is planning. Tavat's ley line system is deeply entrenched in the planet. Creating new ley lines can neither replace nor extend the ones that already exist. In the face of everything they could be planning, I fear I'm too insignificant to even get a glimpse of the bigger picture. In any case, I had my own use for the Loom of Fate, and my goal, at least, has been achieved. You remember my father, don't you? Clotar Alberic. I believe you saw him in your sibling's memory. After he used the power of the Abyss to restore consciousness to my hilly churl form, I suffered from an indescribable level of mental anguish. To comfort me, my father told me a story that this was a fairy tale world where I had to take on the form of a little monster. That story managed to dispel my fears, even if just for a moment. My goal was simple, to use the Loom of Fate in its near-completed form, when its ability to create memories was at its strongest, to implant a specific memory into the minds of the Hillichurls. In that memory, I would tell them a story, just like my father did for me. It was a story of fairy tales and love. But, more than anything, it was the story of us. I 
I can't change the world. Not when I lost the very right to exist within it. Implanting those memories, that was the most worthwhile thing I could offer. All that's left of my existence is a wisp of residual consciousness tied to the loom of fate. In truth, that trace of my consciousness should have dissipated long ago. My goal was the one thing that allowed me to hold on all this time. But now, the bedtime story is finished. And it's finally time to rest. Like I was too late to see Kari Bear one last time. <laughs> Kari Bear's consciousness is gone. And this space will soon disappear along with it. Neither of us belongs here. That's why we're not tangible. Were that not the case, I'd love to hug you too. Well, how about a conversation? The chance to just stop and talk like this is certainly not easy to come by. Wouldn't you agree? That battle earlier was tough. The one against Dane, I mean. I didn't expect that after everything, he would still hesitate to raise his sword against me. Were it not for that, perhaps I'd still be no match for the Twilight Sword. Even after 500 years. The Loom of Fate, huh? I still haven't found a way to utilize it to its full potential. But there's still time. Before the heavenly principles awaken. Yes. For 500 years now, ever since the cataclysm in Conria, there's been no sign of activity. Not long ago, you witnessed the Hydro Archon destroy her divine throne. Yes. Such a flagrant disregard for the rules. And still Celestia took no action. I suppose that's proof enough of the Heavenly Principles situation. However, the Heavenly Principles will awaken. We just don't know when that will be. Or what might trigger it. You could say that. Just look at Kari Bear. He was so pure and single-minded. The space we now find ourselves is a perfect representation of who he was. Quiet and peaceful, even as a hilly churl. Seeing the terrible sight within the mirror wasn't enough to taint his spirit. He brought comfort to the people of this world. Even though he was denied the very right to be a part of it. So ask yourself this. Who was it that deprived him of that right to exist? Of course, that's only one example. My feelings about the heavenly principles are too complicated to explain in just a few words. <sighs> Lumine? You're the only one in this world who calls me that. So 
much I wanted to ask you. But for some reason, I'm not interested in asking those questions right now. There's just one thing I have to ask. One thing I could never understand. Why? Why can't we continue our journey together? <sighs> at the end of my journey, I arrived at a place known as the Sea of Flowers at the end. Do you remember? A long time ago, when we traveled between worlds together, you told me he wanted to find a place in the universe where that one flower was in full bloom. To have a place like that suddenly appear before me? Well, would you think of that as a coincidence? You mean... I miss you too, Lumine. But as this war continues to rage, and as I continue to seek that final answer, I don't even know how to face myself sometimes. Let alone my own sister. <sighs> What's going on? This space has lost its tether. I doubt it'll be able to exist much longer. In fact, aside from our ability to physically interact with each other, there's something else you should know about this space. With Kari Bear gone, we won't be able to remember anything that happened here. Everything in this space will be wiped from existence, including all memory of our reunion. You're only telling me this now? Fuzzy. Oh, Paimon woke up a little earlier than you, so Paimon will fill you in. The villagers said that they saw us sleeping near the village yesterday. They couldn't wake us up no matter how hard they tried, so they decided to just bring us back here. Oh, and Dane came by just now? It looked like he was injured. He didn't say anything, though. Just made sure that you were alright and left. Kinda seemed like he had a lot on his mind, but... That's Dane for ya! Hmm... Let's think for a second. We were in that memory, and we saw that guy you called Curry Bear! He was the missing villager that we've been trying to find, right? And after that... Uh, Paimon doesn't remember what happened. Wait, really? What a score! Sleep well? Bayram? You sure seem happy. Did something good happen? Something good? Huh. Wasn't anything good or bad, I'd say. It's just that, well, the village organized another search party yesterday. It didn't feel right to leave all the searching to the adventurers. So there we were, searching away, when suddenly this one guy said it all came back to him. According to him, one day around dusk, he was passing by this one tree outside the village, and he saw our missing villager. There he was, sleeping under that tree all by himself. His parents came a little later to wake him up, and they all left together. They looked like quite a happy family, apparently. And after that, well, we all started to feel like that really is what happened. Kind of strange that we forgot all about it for so long. Oh, and we also remembered his name, Curry Bear. Now, that's not a name you hear every day. Would have been helpful if we remembered it sooner. Well, I, 
I hope he's happy wherever he is, and we're all relieved now that we know what happened. Seems like everyone thinks Kari Bear left the village. That's probably for the best. At least they have some sort of explanation now. Hmm. Paimon wonders how Atos is doing. Maybe we should go check on her. If she hasn't remembered like everyone else, we can tell her what happened. Paimon didn't see her in the village just now, so she's probably at the tree. Come on, let's go talk to her. You two. I was just about to go looking for you. I wanted to thank you. I was part of the search party, so I... remembered what happened to Kari Bear now. Honestly, I just... can't believe I forgot something so important. It's funny, but I have this feeling he told me the same thing. I just can't seem to remember when. I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. Life is made up of a series of memories. As long as I hold on to our time together, he'll always be a part of my life. I'm just happy I got to meet him. So, who cares what happens in the future, right? <sighs> okay, I'll admit, I'm just putting on a brave face. I was dumped, wasn't I? Otherwise, why would he just leave like that without saying goodbye? <laughs> You don't need to comfort me. I'll be okay. It's just like Kari Bear said. It's the things we overcome that make life more precious. And you know, if he has a heart, maybe he'll come back and see me one day. Anyway, thanks for all your hard work, you two. I promised I'd help Granny Jahiet with something, so I should head back. Goodbye. Well, that should be it, right? Everyone's lives can go back to normal now. Oh, right! Weren't you about to tell Paimon what happened after your conversation with Kari Bear? A... Uh, a picture? Where'd that come from? Let Paimon see!